Len, there are two different kinds of views of consciousness that I keep hearing about, and they seem to be contradictory. On the one hand, we know there's this binding problem where we have vision, sight, smell, touch, but we see everything as a, a unified whole. Um, and some would claim that consciousness, therefore, is, is a unity. Others would say that that's a fiction, even an illusion, because all it is are these different components that we artificially clump together. Uh, same facts, radically different interpretation of what consciousness is. How do you see it? Well, it's difficult because nobody really knows what consciousness is in, with an operational definition that we can use to test the ideas. But there does seem to be a difference, let's say, between a digital camera and your eyes. So that's, a, that's one place you could start. I think we can all agree that a digital camera isn't conscious, and you probably are. <laughs> <laughs> now, what is the difference between those two systems? So the digital camera has pixels, and each pixel records a color and an intensity, and together, when you put them together, you see a picture. But the camera doesn't put them together. There's no relation between the different pixels in the camera or in, in, the, in, the, in the way the image is stored. In your brain, though, you interpret an image from this. So to you, it's not just colors and intensities, but, but you see a connection between the colors and intensities. And you, you, maybe you're hearing what's going on in the scene, you're smelling what's going on in the mm -hmm. scene, you're, it's, you're integrating all the information. So the, the most interesting approach that I see to consciousness today is this approach through integrated information, where consciousness has, seems to have to do with not just having information in different parts of a system, but the connection between those parts, the idea that the information that the system has is greater than the sum of the parts. And of course, our brains are extremely highly interconnected. So that, that does seem to match the physical structure of the brain and the consciousness that arises from that, whereas the pixels are just sitting there. Well, you could maybe draw the analogy between the camera and, and our eyes, because our eyes themselves are not conscious, but pick up the electromagnetic information to pass on. Yeah. In a sense. Well, if you, if you cut the picture in half, what you end up is two half, is two half pixels. You actually have, have the same thing. Nothing changes, because right. uh, the pixels don't know about each other. Mm -hmm. So if you cut a picture in half, you have the same, same information. But there are people with, uh, who are called split brain patients who've had their corpus callosum cut that separates the right and the left hemisphere of the brain. And they do that sometimes as a treatment for severe epilepsy. And when that happens, the right side of the brain and the left side of the brain can't communicate. Mm -hmm. And it's very interesting that when that happens, the people, they seem normal when you talk to them. But if you investigate further, it seems almost as if they have two consciousnesses, two personalities. Mm -hmm. And Christoph Koch, in one of his books, writes about a particular case that's kind of sad, where a woman was being interviewed, and uh, she was asked how many seizures she had had in the past week. Uh, and she was asked to raise her hand to tell. And one hand went up and said two, and the other hand went up and said four. And then one hand started to put the other hand down, and the hands started fighting with each other. Mm -hmm. And the two halves of her brain were fighting. So as opposed to the camera, with, where nothing really happens when you divide the, the image in half, in your brain, if you cut it in half, you get two different, two new brains. So that is a characteristic of consciousness. The integration seems to be very key. You mentioned that consciousness is more than the sum of its parts. Uh, how so? Because some disagree with that. Some say that that seeming feeling that it's more than the sum of the parts is the grand illusion. Well, what I really said was that, that, that the information is more than the sum of its parts. Now, I don't know how to say if consciousness is more. There, are, there is a, a, one mathematical theory out now, uh, uh, Giulio Tononi's theory, that, that, that seeks to quantify consciousness. But I, I don't think we really know yet how to quantify consciousness in the sense that we could say this is more conscious than that. I mean, we have a feeling for it. You could say, my dog, you might feel your dog has a certain level of consciousness, and you might feel that you have a higher level of consciousness, but I'm not sure what that really means. So as a scientist, I'm a little bit uh, hesitant to talk about what is more or less in consciousness. Well, well, well push yourself on that. Uh, you, you, you know, can you speculate? Uh, I mean, there are two radically different positions. One is that we, the, the, the unity of consciousness and the feeling that it is more than the sum of its parts uh, is, is an illusion, that if you took, off, took away each of the parts, you'd have literally nothing left. Everything would disappear. Uh, if, if you take but that away... That doesn't make a lot of sense to me because the, the way your brain works is not linear. So the, when you talk about cutting something in half, you're, you're doing more than separating the components, the substrate, but, but you're breaking a lot of interconnections. So I think that... I mean, to comment on that, I guess I'd have to know more about exactly 
how they're defining the breaking it up. So uh, do, uh, you, you have two, two issues. One is the so-called binding problem, how you get all these different uh, uh, inputs that we have into one, into one unified concept. I see your black T-shirt. Uh, I know it's a T-shirt. I know it's black. I know it has some different ridges in it. I know it's, part of, it's covering a, a person, a friend of mine. I mean, a lot of things are involved in that, and it's just one image that I have. So that's the question is, how do, how do all those things get bound together? That's, that, that's one. And the other hand, one, and that we know for sure. The question, question is, is that, is, is that binding some grander thing in consciousness? Or is it just the, the component parts that are coming together? Because to me, it seems like some gra something grander. That's the natural re feeling about it. What does that mean, something grander? Well, it, it means that consciousness <laughs> is, uh, has an independent existence uh, of itself. It doesn't have to be uh, spooky, but it just has some, some independent, fundamentally uh, different thing about it, other than just the sum of the inputs. Well, when you say there's something grander than what's there, I mean, if I, if I had an identical physical system that is my brain and I put it in an identical state, I believe it would be identical to my mind and it would have the same thoughts that I'm having. So you, I don't think there's anything outside of, of, of the, the physical system that, that is involved in consciousness. Yeah, so that if you were able to uh, duplicate all of your mental process or, or all the physical processes of your brain in, in another medium, that that would have the same, same. In, internal, not just behavior, but internal uh, uh, subjective uh, feelings and, and whatever that means yes i do i mean because it would have the same physical state and i think that consciousness arises from a physical state you know the history of science we've had a lot of mysteries it used to be the eclipses were a mystery and we <laughs> thought that wolves jumping across the sky were chasing the sun and the moon and that caused eclipses and we always look for these something outside to explain things we didn't understand. And we've always been able to knock that down with science right, right, right. and show we now right. understand it. And there's no sign that anything outside of physical laws are, is needed to explain anything that we've ever come across. And are those physical laws the laws we know today? Do you think... Well, there are laws that we don't know today that, that are important in the universe. But in your mind, it seems to be that your mind is a, is a, a pretty ordinary classical system, uh -huh. not even... a a quantum right. system right. just it, it runs by the usual laws it's just right. extremely complicated i mean your brain has a hundred billion neurons and and that's a r roughly the order of magnitude of the stars in our galaxy yeah. but they're each is connected to 10 1000 to 10000 others which the stars right. aren't right. so we can study the stars and learn a lot about them and understand them and we're not making much progress on the brain or its progress is very slow right. so the brain is much more complicated than your brain is much more complicated <laughs> than the universe so it's hard to, um, in the physical universe of stars, so it's, it's hard to understand, but I, I do believe that it's governed by the state, by the physical properties of the system and the state of the system at any given time. And if I could reproduce my system and the, and the neural net and the interconnections and including how they work in, in, in say, in a silicon system, then that would be me.